maybe let's pivot a little bit, right? Uh, how do you see uh, refining companies kind of in say 2035? Where do you think they will be uh, and what will it take uh, for them to survive and stay through 2035? Yeah, so there's, we've got one that's called, we, we're calling it like the refinery of the future, but really it's not just the refinery, right? It's, a, it's the industrial complex of the future. Uh, you're gonna need a lot of liquid hydrocarbons for a long time. Mm -hmm. So for, for a facility to kind of survive or thrive, you know, 10, 15 years out, um, it's gonna have to be heavily decarbonized. It's likely, and I see your crude chemicals, right? You need to have a big integrated chemical play. We've seen some of the super majors basically say, if our refinery doesn't have chemicals associated with it, we don't want it. And we've seen them sell it. Right? We've seen them actually follow through with that. Uh, but we have a vision where you've got carbon capture, right? And we actually had this uh, for Rodeo. We, we actually showed this over time, kind of a Google bird's eye view. And you layer project over project as things come on to decarbonize it. And there's a graph on the right that shows the CI score come down with each mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. And the, of course, capital goes out the door, but also incremental EBITDA comes in. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of watch it in real time as it evolves. And so we've got a, a deal to, to bring in a solar farm to help, we already have a cogen there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a couple carbon carbon capture projects we're looking to put in. We've already converted, I said the one unit to 10,000 barrels a day. That's already converted. Uh, we've got a vision to bring in renewable hydrogen um, and potentially renewable natural gas as well. And so we, we think we can get that down to be you know, 20 to 30 CI facility, still cranking out 50,000 barrels a day of liquid hydrocarbons that, that we need. And like, you know, our Humber refinery in the UK, uh, we're very fond of that one as well. It's got the premium Coke production. It's surely the only place in Europe that you can buy that quality of Coke for the battery value chain mm -hmm. for all of Europe. Um, otherwise you're going to China. Uh, but we've looked at that option. We have a couple projects, the Gigastack project, the Humber Zero project. Uh, we'll still process a lot of North Sea crude, but there's still ways for us to really decarbonize that. And each step will just have to be looked at um, as far as is the view worth the climb. Some places there's plenty of renewable natural gas, so it makes sense. Yeah. Other places you can't. But you also want to work then, um, you know, with lawmakers to do things like book and claim. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to go support this RNG project over here, but I'm going to claim I ran it over here, yeah. even though physically I'm not going to have to move the molecule. Mm -hmm. But you're still getting what you want. You're getting investments into renewable fuels. Um, so there's a combination of those things. So we'll see a lot of a lot of chemicals, uh, a lot of decarbonizations. Um, and just a lot of optimization, and, and where you can't do that, there'll be more rationalization. And for such a facility, what do you think of margins? Do you see them being much, much higher, much, much lower? Well, what we're seeing here, at least in the early days, you know, when you can do these small projects, we have like almost infinite returns on some of these things, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the used cooking oil uh, that we're doing in, in the UK, it was almost no capital, right? A little storage tank and maybe some connections, but it's almost nothing. Um, now the volumes aren't huge and you have to kind of, we've had to retrain our executives on this because they think anything less than 100,000 barrels a day is nothing. Um, and so when you're talking about projects to do 400 barrels a day, right? But we're doing tire paralysis oil as well. You know, one thing I think a lot of folks don't appreciate is, you know, EVs are quite heavy compared to a traditional ICE vehicle, 50% heavier in a lot of cases for an equivalent vehicle. Um, so they burn through tires, right? I was in a cab in London a few months ago, and he was telling me like every six months he has to change his tires. So what do you do with all those tires? Well, right now they typically go into cement kilns. Well, that's not good, all right? So now we're, we're taking that and we're they create a paralysis oil, and we take that and run it through, again, co-processed very cheap. A few hundred barrels a day at $100, $100 a barrel margin, right? So we've kind of had to show this to our executives and kind of retrain them to say, the volume seems small, but you're not getting by on paper thin margins. These are massive margins. So the actual EBITDA generation is meaningful. Um, and you have to watch, you know, if the market gets overbuilt, that'll go away. So there has to be some barrier to entry there. So that gets right back into which part of the value chain are you in and how can you lock down uh, what you need so that you can maintain those margin captures. So, I mean, th that's, a, uh, I, I, at least, we see that as a serious problem, which is that the industry has been trained at looking at projects of a certain scale, of a certain margin profile. That's right. But, uh, and I talked about this in uh, my outlook this morning, that energy transition is going to be a lot of small, fragmented, niche markets that are all independently super lucrative. Uh, but they're not going to have the scale to build a 625,000 barrel per day refinery. 
Uh, but then there's this entire generation of management and executives that's been brought up to think that, uh, you know, scale is, 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 is most important. You know, I, 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 one of the things that I truly believe in is that if you look at ethanol, for example, ethanol started off in 2005, renewable fuel standard one as like 3% ethanol. Sure. And people looked at it and said, sure, this will never go anywhere. And then that 3% ended up to like a little over 10%, right? And, and yep. so that's 10% market share that the fuels industry has given up. Uh, and I, I guess how does, so, and this is a massive change management problem. You're not gonna wake up tomorrow sure. morning and suddenly replace your entire, uh, you know, management layers, right? There's a significant change management issue, I guess, how. How, how are companies like Philip 66 thinking about that? Uh, we, we've been evolving, you know, evolving our, our leadership team, evolving our board. That's one way you really do. We've seen a, a pretty good turnover on our board of directors uh, with a good focus on that, right? And the board can drive a lot of, of that change in behavior. Uh, it's also helpful we just talk to them in millions of gallons a year as well, right? So it's, <laughs> it sounds a little bit better. Uh, but it really comes down to, to credibility and you have to deliver. And we saw this back in the midstream days, you know, when we started that group up. Uh, Sweeney Hub Phase One, um, not just internal credibility, but external. Internally, we had a lot of folks saying, "Are you really going to do that?" I mean, you know, I hope so. It's my job, right? <laughs> um, but even externally, we had midstream um, you know, competitors. They were saying, "Yeah, Phillips will never do that. They can't do it. They can't build a frack." And so we had to bring that first big three and a half billion dollar project for Sweeney Hub. It had to be to market on time, and it had to work for external credibility. And we had to do it on budget and make money for internal credibility. Mm -hmm. And so I think you do the same thing here is where do, where do you get the early wins? And whether it was with the Shell Rock soybean crusher, which is now online producing soybean oil, whether it's our Novonics investment, whether it's the hydrogen in, in Europe, um, we're looking for those early wins to hopefully demonstrate credibility internally that we can do this and be good stewards of our capital, mm -hmm. but also externally, right? You wouldn't believe once we just announced the first project, phones ringing off the hook. Holy cow, Phillips really is serious. They're going to do this. We want to be a partner with them. Um, even when we announced the battery thing, which was a big deal, we got calls from carbon capture people. It was like, okay, we've seen what you guys have said. We've seen the four pillars. You've made the investment in batteries. How about coming with us on a carbon capture thing? We can help you out. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of that's been been really helpful, uh, but if, if you have enough wins, then just it kind of builds on itself.